Uh, the, speaking about the event storming, I would like to make <laughs> a small confession uh, to all of you. A few years ago, uh, I was extremely addicted to the frameworks. I was a uh, framework fanatic, database fanatic, performance fanatic. I would like to know every single possible framework, every single possible database, every single possible NoSQL database, all the differences, all the use cases, and use this information in every single possible project. And uh, from perspective of today, it was extremely, extremely huge mistake. Uh, probably you, you heard a lot of information and, and the slogan, the framework is the detail and the database is the detail. Yes, I, I, I see this because I, I made a lot of mistakes. And uh, a few years ago, there was uh, um, the Eric Evans wrote his famous book, Tackling Complexity in the Heart of Software. Probably the most important book you should read in your career if you would like to, to work on high complexity, high value project. And uh, this book was written in 2004, if I remember correctly. And uh, this book started all the DDD domain driving design movement. And uh, in our PHP community, in our PHP industry, this DDD movement explodes, I don't know, three years ago, more or less. And um, from this book and the, the whole Eric Evans thoughts, there is a very, very interesting uh, sentence which changed my, my, my mind in the, in the context of, of, of software development. And the sentence is, the critical complexity of most software projects is in understanding of the domain itself. And when I started to think about it, I change everything because uh, I'm not um, anymore addicted to the frameworks. I'm not anymore addicted to the databases because I don't care about them, to be honest. And, <laughs> and the, 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 the framework choose is not the first thing I would like to perform in, in, in when I start a new project. And why? Be because there is something more important in, in every single project. This is a domain. Of course, I'm talking about, about the, the high complexity, high value project. If you are working on crude uh, uh, application, it doesn't matter what kind of software you are using. You, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of so framework uh, you would like to use or which database. Just use a generator and complete the job. Don't spend so much time on, on, on digging on the domain. It's a crude application. And, uh, but if you are working on very, very complex software with complex requirements, complex processes, workflows, yeah, the domain is probably the king. And this is the first, very first thing you should understand very, very deeply. And this is a place where you can ask yourself a question. The question is what kind of activities you can perform to understand the domain. I can bet that most of us if not all of us, are working in agile methodologies like Scrum, Scrum Bus, or Kanban, whatever. And what is your approach to understand a domain? User stories, talking with product owner? Yeah, sometimes it's enough. But uh, when I started digging in, in, in this kind of um, problems, I found a domain storytelling technique. It's a, it's a technique where you can start telling a stories about how your domain is used. And uh, when I found this technique, I found this guy. This guy is an Italian uh, uh, agile uh, uh, Ruby guy. It's, his name is uh, Alberto Brandolini. He, four years ago, more or less, during one conference and workshop, he proposed an event-based modeling technique to tell a story about your domain. If you've got, if you've got an a event, and you can use these events to tell a story. You can share these stories with your business clients, with, with business user, and you can share these stories with business uh, with other developers. And uh, it is a probably very very perfect tool because you don't talking very very technical stuff. You are talking about the business stuff in business in business language. And uh, this technique at the beginning had few names, and after all. The current name, the final name of this technique is even storming. 
Uh, even Stormic is very, very chaotic workshop. And, uh, and you don't need any projector, you don't need any computers, you don't need to write any software, or you, can, you can't use any software to perform this workshop. If you've got your initial thoughts about your domain, so probably you've got a lot of questions, how it should work, what kind of problems we can get, what kind of solution we can apply, it, and so on and so on. And if you've got a question, someone probably has an answer for, for your question. So if you can gather in single room, in single place, in single time, at the same time, a people with question and people with answer and offer them a modeling space and some very, very uh, basic stuff for modeling, you can run this workshop. Usually, you, you, all you need is just a, a single room without the, 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 the chairs, without the tables, when you can have uh, an unlimited modeling space. Uh, <laughs> probably the best modeling space is a sheet of paper from IKEA. Uh, you can put it on the wall and you can always add some more space if, if needed. And uh, I, I said unlimited modeling space. It is very, very important to have unlimited modeling space because when you're starting a new project and, and, and domain digging, you don't know what kind of domain you've got and you don't know what size of domain is. And um, if you can deliver to every single part to be some at this, at this, at this, uh, at this event uh, a set of silly sticky notes and the markers and some time to, for conversations, that's all you need to do to, to, to perform this workshop. And um, after all, this technique is very, very complex. It's the same, the same time, very, very easy and very, very complex. And uh, this technique has different layers. And depending on your needs, uh, you can use different, different portions of notations offering by this, um, um, by this technique. And you can stop in every single moment if you said, okay, it's enough for us in this time of, of, of project. And of course, this technique is maybe be iterative. You don't need to perform a whole event storing workshop at the beginning and single point of time. You can reply, you can, um, for example, you can perform a workshop during every single um, iteration of your, of your agile methodologies. And um, in Italy, there is a team which is going to, to, to apply um, event storming on a daily basis. They spend one hour of modeling every single morning and after uh, late afternoon there is a release to production. And the next day, the history is <coughs> going over, over, over. As I said, this technique has few layers. So you can use this technique for gathering a big picture of your, of your system. Big picture, just to see the flow, just to see a boundaries between, between, um, between modules, find the modules, find the flows, find, find the users and the external system. If, you're, if a big picture is, is completely enough for you, you can stop it here. And um, it's usually big picture workshop is the first uh, activity in, in, in my project, just to see a, a big picture from a high perspective, what kind of system we've got and what kind of problems we can, we can find in our software. Okay, so you can use this technique for process modeling. If you've got a business process to implement, uh, usually it, th this process involves a lot of context in your system, a lot of modules, a lot of aggregates and, um, and, and users. And you can use this technique to, to identify what is the workflow and how I can, um, what can I can do if my workflow fails? What kind of alternative path I've got um, to perform? Or finally, <laughs> you can use this technique for software design. And it's probably the most interesting part uh, for, for, for us as a developer. So you can use this technique to, to identify uh, aggregates because this technique is very, very strongly connected with domain driven design. So the so final step in this technique is aggregates identification. And uh, the heart of this technique is, of course, an event, because the, the name of this technique is even storming. And uh, 
what is the event? If you don't know what the event is, or if you would like to, to, to find a perfect definition for someone who is not a very, very technical, so definition is very, very simple. Uh, An event is a fact. Something was happened in the past. And this fact is very, very business important. And uh, this definition is completely um, uh, perfect. And of course, some sample, uh, sample um, if you would like to model event on the sticky note, all you need to do is, is write a name of this event on the sticky note. And this name, of course, should be in past tense because it happened in the past. And the, 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 the perfect example of, of name of the event is invoice requested, reservation rejected, payment confirmed, or debit cancelled. Very, very typical name taken from my project, by the way. And of course, if you've got the name of this event, you should probably have some, the, the, there are some properties related to this event. For example, if you've got an event called debit cancelled, so you've got probably information who cancelled this debit, uh, on which account, when, what was the reason um, why this, this debit was cancelled. And uh, in implementation layer, of course, it will be a DTO, a small class, just a container for the data, we can transform and, and uh, transfer between the layers. Nothing more. No logic, just a class with given name with some properties. Not so complicated. And when you're starting an even storming workshop and you've got a lot of people in the room, every single person is prepared for modeling, you've got multiple parallel process of brain dump. If you know something about your domain, just put it on the sticky note and put it on the modeling space, usually on the wall. And after a few minutes, you've got more and more and more, even on the board. They are probably very, very chaotic, and uh, there is, there is uh, no order um, on, this, on this wall. And usually you've got, let's say, 100 sticky notes, and every sticky note represents something important from the domain. And maybe some events are duplicated. Maybe some events will be correlated to the same thing, but they will be written in um, using different words. So m maybe this is other perfect situation to uh, to make our terminology in projects we are using more consistent. I remember one project in one company in Warsaw where there was a specification, very very. Um, perfectly written in Polish language and this specification was split into few parts and that every single part was delivered to the, to the separated team. They talk uh, with each other a little bit and after a few months they realized that they implemented few things few times and exactly the same things were implemented. Because the terminology used in different parts of specification was different. And there was no space for uh, making this, this, this wording more consistent. So if you've got a lot of events, very, very chaotic, organized, or maybe unorganized on the wall, maybe this is time for some, some organizations. And if you've got an event, let's say this is a part of uh, e-commerce uh, domain. Let's say this event maybe um, Cart uh, add item was added to the cart, and this item item is uh, item removed from the cart. So, if we consider this modeling space as timeline, <coughs> where time starts here and goes this way, this ordering is inappropriate. So, before we remove something from the cart, we should add um, this item first to the item to, to, to the cart. Sorry. And uh, maybe this is a time for some movement on the board. If you've got a sticky note, this is very easy to, to retouch and attach in, in other place. So after a few minutes, you probably have got a lot of workflows on the modeling space. Each workflow represents a business case from your domain. And, uh, and of course, remember that on this meeting, you've got developers who have questions, and you've got probably business users, business customers who got an answer. If you don't know 
what the valid order is, you can discuss it. And to be honest, the, 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 the event storming is all about discussion, all about having conversation. And uh, in one hour of conversation, you can change a lot of information with other people. And you will be astonished what, what is the effect of one hour of conversation in single room maybe when you've got, let's say, 10 or 15 people. If you've spent some time on, 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 on this ordering or maybe remodeling event, because if you, if you see a mistake, just, just replace an event, you can probably see that, okay, we've got the modeling space and our modeling space is a little bit divided. And we've got a set of flows and another set of flows and there is probably a boundary behind them. And if you are looking in the context of domain driven design for bounded context, where, the, where the, 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 the bounded context boundary is, this is one of the answer. You can take a look on the wall and probably will be ready to, 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 to identify a boundary. And um, if you see all your problems, all your events, all your flows on the wall, you will probably be able to identify some other problems. And I will show you a few other examples later. And um, yeah, th this is a very, very basic stuff if you would like to perform a first step in event storming. Just find the, find the event from your domain, write it and put it and organize. And uh, of course, there are a few, few other techniques how, which you can use for better event organization, for better event finding. You can ensure what kind of technique you can, uh, you, you can use to ensure that no other event is missing. And um, of course, I would like to, to just inspire you a little bit for your investigation in this topic, <laughs> because we all, we have, we've got only one hour to, 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 to this talk. But in the real world, it usually looks like that. You've got a modeling space. This photo was taken at, uh, at Wroclaw during one workshop where we had, uh, were remodeling e-commerce um, application, if I remember correctly. And after 10 minutes, we had some, some events on the board. Some of them were duplicated, mm -hmm. as I said. Uh, some events were uh, completely badly written without uh, past tense, without, with wrong terminology. It's not a problem, you can always uh, fix it. And we started to organize it. And as you see, this flow is a little bit organized and this part is still a little bit chaotic. And um, by moving sticky notes around, trying to achieve a perfect ordering for this stuff, your domain will be more and more and more organized. Uh, during this workshop, we identified that, okay, do, with some events, we've got very, very strong and long discussion. And maybe there is no time for discussion here, so let's cut it off, park this discussion on the wall in area um, related to this, to this discussion, and move forward. Let's back it, let's return um, to this discussion in future. And during next step, you, you can expand your ex you can expand your your notation for example if you see that you've got some flows very very good organized like here 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 maybe here maybe here maybe here find a name for it maybe this is a a, a card checkout maybe this is an order um, a payment process maybe this is a reclamation process maybe this is a, a, a reclamation refunding process just find a good naming for it. You can, of course, apply a lot of small steps to understand your domain and problems um, from your domain a little bit better. If you deliver to every single man in the in, in, in room another sticky note on another market marker and ask everyone in the room if you see a very, very problematic event for you, maybe from the technical perspective, maybe from the business perspective. For, for example, if you've got experience um, in, in payment gateway implementation, so you know what kind of problems you can expect. So if you see an event related to this part, which may be problematic, 
just put, your, put this marker on this event. And from the business perspective, if you consider this event as a problematic, so if we, this event will happen, we've got a serious problem in our application, point it. And after a few minutes, you've got another benefit from this session. You've got a hotspots identified in your problem, in, in, in your project. So, for example, take a look on this event in the center of the circle. This event is related, th there is a discussion, ongoing discussion related to the event, and this event was marked by three people in the room as a problematic. Here, two, two guys, problematic and discussion. Here, the flow is very, very straightforward, but the end of this flow is probably problematic. And uh, this, this context was whole problematic. <laughs> And uh, of course, you can, as I said, you can expand this no 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 notation. For example, if you know that our system is working with external system like payment gateways, like email, like CRM, like um, finance system, invoicing software, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can model the systems on the board. If you see that this system will be executed somewhere here, yeah, this this rectangle uh, feel what? box represents an external system. External system, external system. You can see the complexity of your domain and you can use this information during next backlog refinement to, to put some higher estimation because you know that there, there is a problematic situation inside this event, this, inside this model. And of course, you can stop it here. The big picture uh, is maybe is good enough if you would like to, to, to see what kind of problems you've got, what kind of external system, what kind of flow, um, and what is the size of your, of your problem. And uh, during last session in, in, in Freshmail in Krakow, uh, the small uh, time lapse was recorded, and I would like to show you this, this movie. Um, this is a part of production event storming session, and you will see that You've got a modeling space on the left. You've got the, I don't remember, probably 12 people on the right, but not everybody is visible on this, on this page. And um, the, the, the whole modeling process is extremely parallel. OK, let's take a seat. You've got very, very multiple ongoing discussions. And uh, everyone is working on single model. On the left side, you've got the model of your software. And uh, I would like to play this, this movie one more time, because there is a very interesting situation here. There will be one guy in red t-shirt on the right. And this guy was, uh, is a company owner. And take a look how this guy is involved in process of software modeling. Yeah, this guy. This guy. He will be back. He will be back. <laughs> yeah. He was able to, to, to jump into discussion of developers, the company owner who can't code and say, OK, guys, this flow should be is different. You, I know you, you, you implemented this in the current version of the software this way, but in our business, it works completely different. So let's change, let's remove some, some sticky notes, some events, because they are not related in our, um, our case. And this, this workshop was very, very interesting, because the this, this software was a little bit monolithic. And after five hours of workshop, if I remember, uh, we identify 16 bounded contexts in the software, 16 after five hours. And the outcome was really, really impressive. And uh, if you know how you can perform this session, you can ask yourself when you should do this, when you should consider this. And from my experience, <laughs> the answer is simply always. And when you start a new project, just spend two hours with your colleagues, with your business clients um, to, to model your software, your understanding of your domain will be extremely, extremely higher. Even if you are working on the software for years, you can run this workshop 
to be sure that your understanding of the domain is exactly the same as your colleague. And uh, it may look looks very, very silly what I said, but uh, I had experience with one foreign team when I, when I was working in, uh, in London. Um, this, this team was about 10 developers. And the experience in this project was from four years to 12 years. And after one hour of workshop of putting the events, they realized that their understanding was completely different, even if they work exactly on the same software. And the last question you can ask yourself is why you should do this or why you should consider using the event storming. As, as I said, for me, the event storming is a perfect communication platform. It's not very technical at this moment, but this is a place where you can have a conversation and you can talk about your domain, about the domain usage with your client if your understanding of this problem will be good enough, your software will be good enough. If you have no understanding of your domain, what you can deliver to production. Probably assumptions uh, that you are thinking it should be worked this way. And, um, and there is another benefit from this session. And this is why you should perform something like that. It's a mistakes. Usually we make a mistakes. We've got the test to, 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 to find the mistakes, of course. And sometimes we, we can deliver a business mistake in flow to the, uh, to the production. And the question is, what is the cost of the mistake? If the mistake was already written, committed, and delivered to production, if you need to change anything, this is a real, real huge cost for your company. If you can model your software, no matter which technique you are using before, you can minimize this cost. So what is the cost of the mistake in event storming? If you've got your event modeled with sticky notes, just take away this sticky notes from the wall and throw it away. This is the cost of the mistake. And uh, maybe one cent. And uh, you can deliver a correct implementation, correct solution uh, at the first shot. Okay, so as I said before, the event storming technique is, is layered. And uh, this, this part was about a big picture. And you can use a little bit extended notation to jump in other layers. So for example, if this is an event, right? Usually in event storming, you, you are modeling the event with uh, orange sticky notes, but the color doesn't matter to be honest, just, just be consistent. And, uh, so event is something represents something from the past. Something was happened. So this is, an, this is a reaction, reaction for something. And the question is, what was the trigger in our system for this event? Maybe it was, may, maybe an event is a reaction for user action. Maybe an event is reaction for um, external system activity. Maybe an event is consequence of another event. And finally, maybe an event was triggered by time. Uh, a finance year was closed, so you should perform something. And um, the, the probably the most interesting part is of, is, is, is of course user action. You can model your user action, you can represent your user action as a command and um, you've got an action, you've got the reaction. It's, it's, it's physics. <laughs> and of course, you can, you can represent, uh, of course, even a user. If you start a thing thinking that, OK, my user perform an action, my user sends a command to my system, a framework doesn't matter. Because the responsibility from the framework is just create a command object and pass to the execution via command bus, and that's it. And um, if you would like to, to, to see what kind of naming you, you can have for commands. So if your event is called, let's say, debit cancelled. And this is a case from yesterday when I'm working with one team in Zielonagura. 
So this is a command. Cancel the bit, the bit cancel it. Of course, there is a space between command and an event for something in the middle. And in the middle, you've got an aggregate. So if you can model your command, and your command will be executed on your, on your aggregate or using aggregates to perform your action, so event is just a consequence. And of course, your aggregate your object with business rules implemented inside may respond to more than one command. And after all, you can have the situation that you've got all this place, all the, 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 the domain uh, divided into the bounded context, model it on the wall, and you see that, okay, we've got the aggregates in this context, aggregates in this context, aggregates in this context, and in this context, these aggregates respond to this command, this command, this command, and you can even start to think what kind of correlations you've got, you, you, you have between a bounded context. Let's say this module is a part of e-commerce application, um, maybe ordering, and this module it's, let's say, part of recommendations. So if your order was delivered or paid, you can update your recommendations for, um, for this information. So you can use the events as a, as, a, as, a, as a glue layer between modules. And usually, in implementation layer, you would like to have all the context, all the bounded context, almost perfectly decoupled. No direct calls allowed, usually. And uh, it means that you probably you would like to use some messaging software behind the, the, the boundaries, behind the models. So if one model can prepare, can produce an event, this event may be transferred via the RabbitMQ, maybe Kafka, maybe, maybe PubSub interface to the other subscribers, the other models. And after all, you've got the perfect separations of your bounded context. And uh, if you've got this, this information represents on your wall from big picture, you can decide, okay, right now in this sprint, we are going to implement these features with this context. So <laughs> my standard procedure is let's perform uh, a, a big picture one more time workshop and dive down into the details to find all the aggregates, all the commands, all the read models, because if your user would like to perform an action, users usually need some information. So if someone would like to cancel the debit in, in your application, you probably should deliver information about the user, about the, the debit or card or whatever. And uh, after all, you can have, you, you can prepare all the information, all the objects, structure of the objects, and you are ready for DDD implementation. Sometimes my colleagues perform an event storming workshop with extra <laughs> layer, so, so with extra modeling space for C4 model. If you are familiar with C4, so you probably know what is, uh, what is going on, but if you don't know what the C4 model is. So C4 model is context container uh, components and classes model uh, proposed by Simon Brown. Um, follow this guy on Twitter and you will uh, know everything about this, this model. So during event and, and uh, system modeling, you can prepare also C4 model <coughs> of whole your system. And C4 model is all about the documentation of your architecture. So you've got two benefits during a single workshop. And of course, one more time, you can stop here. You can identify a flows, you can identify the, 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 the aggregates, you can identify the commands, and it's completely enough for understanding. But if you would like to jump into implementation, so it will usually be a next step. Every single discovered piece of information <coughs> will probably will be transformed into, let's say, a class. If you've got a, a class called debit cancel it, and you've, sorry, not class, if you've got an event 
called the debit consulate, and you've got information, what was the reason, what was the account, what was the amount of this debit consulate, et cetera, et cetera, you can model this information into the, into the class. And this is a part of implementation using a proof ecosystem. A perfect, perfect tool, by the way. And uh, sometimes all you need to do is just uh, take a photos of the board, <laughs> send these photos to, to, to one or two guys, and let them implement the classes. And uh, after one hour, you've got all the commands, all the events already implemented in your code, and you can focus on most problematic parts, probably the, 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 the aggregates and the flow, the services. And uh, it's, of course, n you can use another set of notations to expand this workshop even more. So usually you've got a very, very complicated flow um, using a sagas or process managers, so you can represent them on the board as well, and usually every single piece of information will become a class. <coughs> and, uh, one of the, my best um, executions of this workshop was a workshop when we discovered about 100 events, and after the next day, next day after the workshop, the application in the context of domain was implemented using a DDD and even sourcing, because we discovered all the events from the domain, all the important parts of the software, and uh, it's, events are already, uh, events are not so, so, so complicated to implement, just uh, DTOs, just class with properties and getters, nothing more. And uh, if you've got one already implemented, just copy, paste, and change, change the attributes, it's nothing more. The commands, objects, usually looks very, very similar. There is no logic in command. And um, if, you, if, you, if you're modeling the command, for, for example, debit cancel it, what kind of information you should put inside this, this object. Reason, amount of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It should be, it should be very, very easy. And uh, I'm using this technique for two years, more or less, and, uh, and I know that I'm going to use in other two years because this is so good, so good. And if you would like to, 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 to take away something from this session, it's, my advice is, just do it on Monday. But don't try perform this workshop with your business guy at the first shot. And uh, if, you will, if, you, if you have no experience with event storming, uh, just read some, 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 some articles in the internet, take your colleague from your team and spend one hour in your team without the business guys uh, to model some part of your domain. If you, will be, if you would like to join your business uh, customers for the first shot, you will probably have some problems because this is very, very chaotic uh, workshop, usually, as you saw on the movie. Massive parallel activities. So someone in this workshop should deliver a facilitation. So if you have some experience of, if you know something about the event storming, so be a facilitator for your colleague and cut discussions, fix the, the, the order of the session and do something like that. And um, if you are going to perform this <laughs> in next week, so you can choose what kind, which level of event storming technique you would like to perform. So maybe a big picture where you can find the event system, boundaries, uh, users or hotspots will be completely enough and believe me, for very first try of even storming workshop, this is perfectly good enough. Even if, you're, even if your system is not ready for DDD, even if your system is CRUD, you can perform this, this, this workshop just for better understanding. One more time, understanding of the domain is the key in the complex of the problems. If you would like to use a process modeling, where you give, you, when, when you've got a commands, read models, maybe, prepared with CQRS architecture, who knows? Maybe when you've got the personal's value propositions or policies, you can start to model a business processes. And um, a few months ago, I had a, a, a very, very 
a cool, uh, cool situation where we're working with live chat software team using even storming on product development. So during one day, they solved a business, very complicated business problems without writing a single line of the code. And they probably um, save a lot of time of fixing business flow in future. And there, there is a very, very interesting article on live chat uh, software uh, developer blog. So if you would like to, to, to read this, uh, I highly recommend. Or finally, if you would like to use uh, uh, event storming for software design, where you can identify an aggregate, a boundaries on the aggregates. As you probably know, if you are using a DDD, the finding size of the aggregates is a huge, huge problem. If you model your aggregates uh, like a huge object, you will have a consistency issue. Uh, uh, sorry, transactional issue. If you, if you model your, your aggregates like a very, very small, very, very tiny object, you will probably uh, will be hit by um, consistency issues. So you can always find one more time policy interactive logics maybe a routing for your, for your commands, maybe routing for your events, and of course, read models. And uh, the, the final thoughts I would like to share is a sentence from Alberto Brandolini, that uh, if you're working on the complex projects, complex domain, a software development is a learning process. And uh, working costs is just a side effect. And, and I can only agree with this sentence. And, uh, After, if you would like to try this technique, so please compare the amount of time you need to, to spend of understanding what kind of problems you need to solve and what are the possible solutions and uh, to compare with this technique with other, uh, your solution. And um, of course, as I said, this is not comprehensive introduction to, 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 to even storming. If you would like to read more, there is a book. Unfortunately, this book is not finished. This book was written by Alberto, and this book is available on LeanPub. So, but the most important uh, chapters of this book uh, are finished. Uh, maybe even if you would like to be a facilitator of this, of this workshop, yeah, you can still wait some time uh, for, um, uh, for Alberto when the, the book will be finished. So that's all for my side. If you've got a questions, I think we have no time for here right now, so I can be uh, around the around the, the, the room call. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>